Welcome to our lecture on statistics for research using Jamovi. Today we will be exploring various statistical methods that can be used in a one-group pre-test, post-test design and how to apply them. A one-group pre-test, post-test design measure a single group before and after an intervention. This helps determine the intervention's effect by comparing pre-test and post-test score. These are the statistical treatments we can use in a one-group pre-test, post-test design. Frequency of distribution, understand how often each value occurs in a data set. Mean, calculate the average value of the data set. Standard deviation, measure the variation or dispersion in the data set. Pair t-test, compare the means of two related groups to determine if there's a significant difference. Read the pseudo case. So here, Mr. Johan decided to implement project-based learning or PBL to enhance his students' learning experiences that would improve students' understanding, retention, and application of scientific concepts. Mr. Johan involved 15 students from his class. He administered a pretest before introducing PBL and a post-test after completing the PBL activities to determine whether there was a significant improvement in the student science course. Next, let's discuss the possible statement of the problem or study. We will be focusing on two key questions. First, what are the student scores before and after implementing project-based learning? Second, is there a significant difference in the student science pre-test and post-test scores after implementing PBL? These questions will help understand the impact of PBL on student performance. Now, let's move on to our hypothesis for the study. Null hypothesis, there's no significant difference between the pre-test and post-test scores. Alternative hypothesis, there is significant difference between the pre-test and post-test scores. We will be using a significance level of 0 0.05 to test this hypothesis. Let's take a look at the pre-test and post-test scores of Mr. Johan students. This data will help us analyze the impact of the intervention and determine if there are any significant changes in the student's performance after implementing project-based learning or PBL. I'll start by showing you a presentation on how we are going to analyze the data. After that, we'll move on to the actual simulation. It's best if you already have the software installed on your PC or laptop. If not, you can use the Movi Cloud for this session. This is how the Movi's window looks when you open it. The left window or box is for your variables data entry or encoding. On the right side, the box with high is where the results will be displayed. When you double click on column A, this dialog box will appear. Here you can type or change the variable name as needed. Type the variable name in the provided field to ensure it is correctly labeled. Click the right arrow to move to the next variable. Next, change the B variable. Label it with the appropriate variable name to ensure clarity and accuracy in your data entry. Type the variable name in the provided field to ensure it is correctly labeled. Click the right arrow 
to move to the next variable. Next, change the C variable, label it with the appropriate variable name to ensure clarity and accuracy in your data entry. Type the variable name in the provided field to ensure it is correctly labeled. Let's now go back to our SOP and focus first on SOP number one, which is a descriptive question that requires the data to be analyzed using descriptive statistics. This descriptive question will help us understand the frequency of scores distribution, mean scores, and standard deviation. Go to the Analysis tab, click on Exploration, and then select Descriptives. This will allow us to analyze the frequency of scores distribution, mean scores, and standard deviation for our data. Move your variables into the variable box by either clicking the right arrow or dragging them. This will allow us to perform the descriptive analysis on the selected variables. After moving your variables, the results for descriptives will be displayed on the right side in the results box. This will show N or the total number of respondents, missing, if there are any missing respondents, mean, the average scores, median, the middle value of the scores, standard deviation, the amount of variation or dispersion in the scores, minimum and maximum, the lowest and highest scores, respectively, these statistics are the default options which are automatically checked in the checkboxes. This ensures that we get a comprehensive overview of our data without needing to manually select each statistic. Click the checkbox for frequency tables to include them in your descriptive statistics. This will provide a detailed breakdown of how often each value occurs in your data set. Here are the frequency of distribution tables. These tables provide a detailed breakdown of how often each value occurs in our data set, giving us clearer picture of the data distribution. To customize your data analysis, you may click on the statistics button. This allows you to remove or add various descriptive treatments as needed. By doing so, you can tailor the statistical analysis to better fit your specific requirements and gain more insightful results. By selecting the appropriate checkboxes, you can tailor the statistical analysis to better fit your specific requirements. For SOP number 1, we only need the following descriptive statistics. Frequency, Mean, and Standard Deviation. Uncheck the options for missing, minimum, maximum, and median. You will notice that this will disappear from the result box of your table. Additionally, check the Shapiro Wilt check box to determine if your data is normally distributed. This will add the Shapiro Wilt test to your analysis providing insights into the normality of your data distribution. Look at the Shapiro Wilk p-value. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, the data shows a significant deviation from the normal distribution. In our case, the p-value of the pretest is 0 0.345, which is greater than 0 
and the post as p value is 0, 0654. Therefore, the data are normally distributed. Let us now analyze the data for SOP2. Is there a significant difference in the student science pretest and post test scores after the implementation of the problem based learning or PBL? Click on the t-test button and select paired sample t-test to compare the means of the pretest and post-test scores. Move your variables into the paired variable box by either clicking the right arrow or dragging them into the box. Result of paired t-test, t-test computed value, negative 5.11 degrees of freedom or df 14 p value less than 0 0.001 let's review our hypothesis look at the null look at the alternative and the alpha or the significant level is set at 0. 0 0.05 or 5%. We reject the null hypothesis if a p value is less than or equal to the significance level. If the p value is greater than the alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. To illustrate the decision rule, if the obtained probability is less than or equal to alpha, reject the null hypothesis. If the obtained probability is greater than the alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, meaning we retain the null. Alternatively, if you will do manual computations, bullets number 3 and number 4 are the decision rules. If computed value is greater than the critical value, reject null. If the computed value is less than the critical value, we fail to reject the null. If you want to change the format of results, such as number format or plots, click on the three dots menu also known as the kebab menu. If you need to change the decimal values, you may click this. Check now the results.